Hi, I'm Lois Barris, and today I have with me David Wolf, who is the Deputy District Attorney in Kern County, and you're stationed in Bakersfield, is that Correct, I'm okay. assigned to Bakersfield right now. And what do you do as Deputy District Attorney? Right, right. so I've been with the uh, DA's office now 25 years, right. and I have handled everything from misdemeanors to first degree murder. Wow. So yeah, it's a pretty exciting job. It uh, seems like it would be. Yeah, yeah. it really is. Okay. It, and thank you for paying for me to have this great job. There are days that I wonder why I even get paid to do it. It's, oh, come on. It's, no, you it like is it so really, much? I do. I do you really, really do love it. And that's one of the things I'm worried about applying to be a. You well, know, he wants to become judge now. A judge, Kern County Superior Court judge. Of what district or what area? So or? it's actually called seat number 20. Okay. And that is it currently assigned to a Bakersfield judge. But just like being a deputy DA when I work for you, a judge is assigned to the county. So if I were to get seat oh. 20, I could be assigned in Ridgecrest or I could be assigned to Lamont or Delano really? or, yeah, it used to be we were not consolidated. But then over a decade ago, they consolidated all the courts. So a and judge- they're all a, superior They're courts all superior now, courts, right. correct. Okay. That's right, we used to have municipal court and superior mm -hmm. court and now Ridgecrest is a superior court. And you could uh, you could come over here then? That's absolutely okay. right. I could okay. be assigned out here. Would it be on a permanent basis or just for a particular trial? Or right. how would that be? Well, um, again, like uh, with the district attorney's office, sometimes we're assigned out here permanently. I have come out here as a deputy DA oh. on a rotation when we had someone off on vacation or when somebody was sick or because I have a particular case mm -hmm. that's out here. Uh, as a judge, seat number 20 is not permanently in Bakersfield. So the presiding oh. judge could say, I need you in Ridgecrest and I need you there full time. And I would come out to Ridgecrest. Oh, for heaven's sake. Yeah. And you wouldn't know until you were elected. Correct. Okay. That's right. Okay. And every year or so they elect a new presiding judge and the judges decide, the presiding judge decides where they're going to put people. Oh, is people. that right? Yes. Okay. So you, you don't have, I want to be there kind of a thing? You do. do. You have any input yeah, no, into yeah, it? Absolutely. You do get input. And of course, your experience mm -hmm. uh, helps a little bit. So for example, I have 25 years of prosecuting crime. So I'm, oh. a, I'm very knowledgeable in criminal law. So th that's probably going to be the most useful to them. But if they need someone doing family law or if they need somebody doing probate, that's the risk you take. And you'll do that because you'll do it's, in, it's in your background so that you can Absolutely. do that. Any Absolutely. judge can do any of it, is that correct? Correct. Any judge can do any and can be required to do any of it. And luckily okay. I have both civil and criminal experience. So that's a good background for you so that you can do is. whatever needs to it be is. done. It is. Absolutely. That's good. Yeah. And what um, area, you said you prefer criminal. Is yes. That, did you say that? Yeah, I, I do. No, I do okay. prefer criminal. Um, it, but just a little bit about the civil side. I, I have been a volunteer judge. It's called a judge pro tem mm -hmm. for over 19 years. Wow. So I have specific training. Uh, every year we get training. I handle cases. I've handled, uh, I've handled small claims, unlawful detainers, traffic, civil matters. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing that. And I, back, in the, back in the day, we had our own calendar, in fact. Uh, in addition to that, I've been a certified arbitrator for the Better Business Bureau, wow. helping people uh, protect their, their consumer rights. And I worked at uh, county council, and I also, before law school, clerked uh, in a civil firm. And then in law school, I did civil work as well. So I've got the yeah. civil experience. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I have far more of is the criminal experience. and From the other side of the bench? From, from as, a as a prosecutor. As a prosecutor, yeah. correct. Okay. And, I think it's most important to your citizens, the judge who's retiring is Mike Lewis. Mike mm -hmm. Lewis is a former deputy. He then became a prosecutor with the DA's office like me. I used mm -hmm. to work in the office with him. He was okay. one of my mentors. And then he became a, a Superior Court judge. So oh. he has significant criminal experience. He also mm -hmm. went to the Reserve Academy, which I did as well. Oh. And that's what, now they call it the Extended Police Academy. So it's Tuesday and Thursday nights and every other Saturday. And you can do that over there in Bakersfield? Correct, on oh. Norris Road, yes. Oh, that's yes. Neat. Yeah, that was okay. a lot of fun. Yeah. I didn't do it because I wanted to be a, a police officer. No? Quite, quite the opposite. I did not want to put the vest on and have a big logo on my... But you wanted to see where they came from, probably. Exactly, yeah. right. I thought it would make me a better Easier prosecutor. Easier to understand what they're thinking. Exactly. I like that. And and I like that. when you're trying to tell a jury why a police officer did something, mm -hmm. oh, and you guys have a gun shop, you understand. Yeah, Not every it? juror understands the difference between a revolver and an automatic. You're right. And so if or a, if a, a tall gun or a little gun. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if a, if, if a revolver was used, you're not going to find casings on the ground. I mean, unless they dump out all six. But if they're doing a drive-by, they're going to shoot, and then there they're won't be go. casings. Right. 
Yeah. Well, if you're a DA and you came from law school and you don't have any law enforcement background, you don't know a lot of the cop type things. You know, I hadn't thought about that, but you're absolutely right. You and wouldn't it, know all those unless if, you happen to be a gun advocate or something. Right, but. exactly. Um, and speaking of guns, you know, I've, I've grown up with guns. I could shoot before I could drive. I my, love it. Uh, my daughters can both shoot before they could drive. My dad owned guns. My grandfather owned guns. Me too. Yes. It's just yeah. part of the family when you it grow is. up with it, isn't it? Is. It is. It's and absolutely. I don't understand why people more in the east than here just don't understand that no they, they, there's it's up here somewhere they right. don't go by. it really is but you've got a lot of other programs that you're taking part in or something right like, no there's that, that one they call what dope, dope stinks, stinks or right. something like that well, before i get to dope stinks let me let me finish talking just real quick about judge lewis if you don't oh, mind oh i'm sorry no I no no we no, no that's right Let's that's go. right I, okay I'm, my wife says i tend to ramble no 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 um, this is great i just wanted mike to lewis is retiring and he has probably more criminal experience than any other judge because he's the only one that's been a deputy out on the streets and been a prosecutor and oh. then became a judge. So we're losing one of our judges who knows the most about criminal law. Really? And there, there are some who say it's more important to have a civil person with civil background to become our next judge. I disagree because in the next year, you are far more likely to be a victim of crime than you are to be involved in a civil lawsuit. You know, every 53 minutes, somebody's murdered by a drunk driver. In our county? No, in the nation. Oh, okay. Every 20 to 30 seconds in the nation, someone's a victim of identity theft. Right. Um, crime, especially petty crime, uh, the smashing of the windows and stealing out of cars, the, the second-degree burglaries, those are going rampant right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, crime is out of control, and we really need to replace Mike Lewis with a with someone who has significant criminal experience. Has that background. Exactly. Yes, right. So and speaking you would fit of that, that background, perfectly, I, then, thank you, I would, you? yes. That'd be great. So you're asking me about dope stinks. Yeah. So well, as a DA, you get different assignments. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been assigned to the homicide, you know, to prosecute homicides. I was assigned to lifers, which is people that are sentenced to life and you go to the prisons to try and keep them in. Mm -hmm. I was assigned to the career criminal apprehension team which was a great assignment because I actually got to go out and play with the uh, officers and do search what warrants. What is that exactly? Well, the career criminal apprehension team, uh, and we used to have a career criminal unit. We don't have one anymore. Mm -hmm. But that was a specialized unit that targeted repeat offenders, the worst of the worst. Oh, and the, you had a smaller caseload, but your job was to try and get those heavy, really bad repeat offenders off the street and keep them there. Mm -hmm. So you had, a, you had a whole team of officers. We had a probation officer, we had a sheriff's, we had Bakersfield Police Department, and we would go to the branch areas. We would come to Ridgecrest, we would go to Rosamond, we'd go to Cal City, wherever they needed us, mm -hmm. and take care of some of their worst problems. And they needed a prosecutor to, to take the case from beginning to end and ah. make sure that that case got the attention it deserved. You knew how he was arrested, you know what he did, exactly. then, you, then you prosecute it to see what All the way through, right, oh, so you got it from great. day, oh, it was, it was a wonderful like assignment. And we don't have that program anymore? No, yeah. unfortunately oh, we don't, yeah. Is that a money problem? Uh, it was a, yeah. a, it was, yeah, apparently Sometimes a, it happens, and, you yeah. know, anyway. But After I left that program, mm -hmm. I went into what was called KNAT. I wrote a grant, it was uh -huh. the Kern Narcotic Enforcement Task Force. Okay. Similar project to try to get the major drug dealers out of our streets off the away from the schools well we all know drugs are bad i mean right you, you, line, right, right yeah. we all know they're bad yeah. we've grown up being told they're bad mm -hmm. i i knew they were bad <laughs> but until you're actually out on the street with these police officers going into someone's home with a search warrant and you see that they've injected themselves until you oh. can actually see their bone oh man it's it's unbelievable how horrible these illegal drugs are. I mean, we know they're bad, mm -hmm. but I felt so naive. I was like, wait, I knew these were bad, but I, I didn't know it was this bad. Right, right. So I thought, my gosh, why isn't someone showing our Working kids? On that. Yeah. So one of the officers who used to go undercover mm -hmm. came up with the idea of Dope Stinks. That was uh -huh. the title. And the reason he liked that name was these criminals smell bad because they don't care about their hygiene, That's right. the they're flesh just, is they're, rotting, they're, yeah. they're, 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 it just, they they're smell drunk. bad. And so yeah. he used to leave his clothes in a garbage bag in the garage that he would wear undercover so he would smell bad, so he could oh. fit in. Oh, isn't that neat though, that yeah. they yeah. figured out all that? So what we used to do is we would take pictures of the abscesses and how bad things are, and we would go into the schools mm. and show these kids these pictures and say, look, I'm not a famous basketball star, I'm not some cool football player, mm -mm. but I wanna show you, you think you know what it's like, you mm -hmm. think you're cool. 
this is what people are doing to themselves. And you have to make a decision. And it was, it's a very, almost like a scared straight program. And it would, I would think it would frighten them, but you, you think it really did pay off? I think so. Okay. Um, I wish I brought some of the artwork and maybe I can email it to you. We That'd had a couple great. of kids yeah. uh, write thank you letters back. Mm -hmm. And one of them wrote, um, drew a syringe, mm. and out of the liquid of the syringe was kind of a, a demon face showing you how bad and evil it was. How clever. Really, kind yeah. of a ghost like figure. You got to really, hear. I'll, I'll email that to oh, you. Oh, would I'd love to see show. that. Yeah. That would be great. We can um, put that out. You'd watch these kids come in, especially depending on what school. Now, some schools, oh my gosh, we did a Boy Scout group. And I asked the kids, okay, kids, what are the gateway drugs? And one of the kids raised his hand and he's all excited and he's waving his hand. I'm like, yes. And he goes, it's alcohol, tobacco, and marinara. <laughs> so apparently they didn't. Little need education <laughs> they needed. Yeah. So but maybe I, they didn't right, need to yeah, know. No, so right. in, that, in that classroom, obviously, I didn't need to be quite as uh, in their face because, I mean, the poor kid thought, a, you know, he's obviously yeah. not an Italian marinara, family. He thought marinara yeah. was one of the gateway <laughs> drugs. But there were other That's schools cute. you would go to, and some, I, I was invited to some grade schools oh, yeah. where they have a problem. They have a marijuana problem. And I would be talking about drugs, and kids would say, oh, that's rock cocaine. <gasps> oh, that's, that's weed. And they were co completely correct. It, it was shocking, that's some scary. of the street knowledge. And yeah. afterwards, the kids will come up to you and they'll talk, especially if they're middle school and below. Once they're high school, they started realizing they shouldn't talk to me. But oh. middle school, they'll come up and tell me what's wrong with my presentation. Oh, that doesn't work that way because, right, uh, right. no kidding? Yeah, and one oh. of the kids, for example, they had two kids come up to me, and I have a picture of what LSD tabs look like. Mm -hmm. And most of us have no idea. I mean, they're, 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 they're printed out on blotter paper. They're about the size of your pinky. And what they'll do is for 10 bucks, they'll just buy a little cube and then they'll, they'll suck on it and get the drug out of it. So I have some pictures in the show of what some of them look like. And so the kids will come up to me and go, oh no, the cool one this year is Bart Simpson or the cool one this year is, you know, and whatever the Whoa. trending issue is, so I hate to say it, politics is probably trending right now, the, the criminals will, and of course they target kids. Mm, so yeah, yeah. when Frozen came out, we had LSD tabs with the characters <gasps> from Frozen. I mean, it's heartbreaking. It is, that's it, really it, sad. And mm -hmm. you're working with this program. Yeah, one of the kids came up that's and awesome. he said that I failed to tell the students that LSD makes you see better. And I'm like, what mm, are you talking about? What are you about? talking about, yeah. These kids were taking the pieces of paper and pulling their eyelids <gasps> back and putting them in their eye and they were saying that they could see better. Well, LSD is a hallucinogen. Uh -huh. So once you're high on it, you see, you see things, lots that, of things. Right, that nobody yeah. else sees. So they literally uh, thought oh my it gosh. was making them see better. And of course, it, it isn't. But yeah, it's, a, it's been a great experience. I think oh. I've learned more from the kids than I've actually taught. We you do. do. That, yeah. yeah. We've, done the, um, we've done the program for church groups. We've done mm. them for the Boy Scouts, for the Girl Scouts. That's we've great. done them throughout Kern County. And it's, it's, it's been a great experience. And as Judge, you would probably want that to continue. I would could. certainly want that to continue. Yeah. And we are in the process. We've, we've converted it to a PowerPoint presentation. Uh -huh. And it's going to be on a thumb drive and a disk so other deputy DAs and other officers can use that uh -huh. program without me present and be able to give it to what more What a great school. idea. So that yeah. basically was your program. Yeah, yeah. it really was. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. And what happens, well, we're, we'll, I'm getting a little ahead oh, of myself, right. but as a judge and you have somebody arrested and they say it's a nonviolent crime and you're not mm -hmm. hurting anybody, that's not really true with all what you're telling no, me. With no, no, it's that. and it. The other thing is, everybody just thinks that, oh, put them in treatment. Mm -hmm. But the the problem is, it's, treatment sounds great mm -hmm. until you look at people that are literally facing losing their arm because they keep hurting themselves, and oh. even after we've fixed their arm, we've given them skin grafts, we've we've saved them from having an amputation, we've put them in custody and then we put them in an in-house treatment program and they get back out and I see them again because they've been rearrested. Oh. The reason these drugs are illegal is they grab a hold of somebody's basically their soul mm -hmm. and they want that more than anything else. True. They'll, they'll want the drugs more than they care about their parents, they'll steal from their own parents, mm -hmm. uh, they'll steal from their best friend. It's, we it's do need life treatment. Giving it, life. it is, yeah. it is. We need treatment. Um, we mm. absolutely need, but we've given up on deterrence. Really? And that, well, they've shut down most of the substance abuse programs. Dare's pretty true. much gone away. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, we get more bang for our buck preventing somebody than trying to rehab them once they're addicted. Oh. And if you think about rehab, mm -hmm. we have people that are addicted to cigarettes and alcohol. And some people can just quit. Mm -hmm. And some people can go to the most expensive treatment program out there and another program and, and it, they just never seem to be able to quit. Correct. And yeah. there's just something about that person has to decide themselves that I am quitting. Mm -hmm. it, it, it has to be that moment when they, it's not, so the, the problem with criminal justice system is telling somebody they have to go to treatment, that's great. But until they decide they need the treatment, until they believe it, yeah. because otherwise they're just going through the motions. They don't want to go to jail or they don't want to go to prison. So, so they'll say, go to okay, I'll do that. They'll, they'll do whatever, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But until they honestly to themselves realize they have a problem, um, they're, how, not, they're not going to be cured. How would you handle that as a judge? You've got this young person in front of you and you want him to get cleaned up. Right. But how do you, you don't know probably. Or right. Well, you, you, you never know 100% yeah. how someone's going to turn out. Yeah. One of the things you look at, of course, is their criminal history. Mm -hmm. If all they've been doing is petty thefts and all they've been doing is drugs, there are better risk than somebody who's been beating up his kids, beating up his mm -hmm. wife, okay. hurting the dog, doing robberies. Makes you have sense. to look at that. Yeah. You have to look at the danger to society and, and you have to protect too. society. Right. You can also look at, well, what did they do during that crime? Because hmm. actions speak louder than words. Anybody can come before you and say, I'm sorry, I feel bad. Yeah. But what are they doing before and during and after the crime? Are they continuing to hurt people? Are they putting people at risk by, you know, fly, you know, driving 100 miles an hour to get away? Mm -hmm. um, are they running through a school and dropping the gun in the school grounds because they're trying to get away? Mm -hmm. I think a person's actions tell us so much more. But as a prosecutor, I can tell you that I've never been opposed to putting somebody into an in-custody treatment program and getting them out of the jail because that means I now have a jail cell for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And if they're successful in getting into treatment, we get them out of our criminal justice system forever. And, and, and they have a life to look forward to. Exactly, exactly. and their kids and their, their spouses. Right. If they fail, I'm gonna put them back in jail. Mm -hmm. And they know that, I mean. And they know that, yeah. and we have that, we have that ability, as mm -hmm. opposed to just leaving them in jail. So, mm -hmm. so it's kind of interesting that you, you have it from both sides, you feel, as a prosecutor, and then do judges pretty much think that way, or is it depend on individual judges how they want to I don't know what you say, sentence a person, is that the... Right, I think, of course there's guidelines, but I do believe it, it depends on the individual judge, and I think mm -hmm. that's another reason you really want somebody with significant criminal experience. Exactly, from you having seen these people face to face and in their own lives, right. and then you'll know where they're coming from and what you might now, be If they're lying to, to you, right. if they're not being truthful, and wow. but you also have to put them in, the, in this, if all a person's ever done is civil, Mm -hmm. then when a kid comes before them and they've done something that's so far worse than civil, mm -hmm. they're going to want to throw the book at them. Whereas if you've handled yeah. robberies and murders and significant crime, you can look at that person and try to make a decision. Hey, does this person seem like these horrible, evil people that do need to be locked up forever? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one thing society is afraid to admit. We have really evil, mean, bad people out we there. We do. There are and those, we, yes we can't always fix them and we have to be able to distinguish between the two. And that, that's your position that you're running for to be able to try to work on that, right? Hey, absolutely. Do you absolutely. have a lot of people running against you? or No, there, there, is one other, there is one other person running against me. Mm -hmm. And um, so are that'll there, be nice, it'll be done in May. Are there more than I'm sorry, one? sorry, June 7th, not May. Yeah, June 7th's coming up it's pretty quick. Right, yeah. There, there more than one seat open or? There's, yes, it's kind of confusing because it we actually have, we actually have, three seats. There was a judge in Lamont who's retiring. Uh -huh. There were two people running for that, but one of them pulled out. Oh, so so that person's on the ballot by himself. Uh, that one's done. Yeah. If he loses, it's going to be crazy because <laughs> there's be nobody funny, running. Wouldn't it? Right, How that would be lose? funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, that's interesting. Ken Green and, and he's going to get Lamont. Okay. And then you have Judge Woodward, uh, who's one of our judges out here. Uh -huh. And there are two people running against Judge Woodward for the Mojave, Mojave Court. So he's kind of in the East Kern area. Okay. And then you've got two people running for the Bakersfield seat. And that's you and one that's, other. That's me and one other. Okay. And you don't know where those folks will be assigned. So 
That's the interesting part. That they is can think very they want to go here, and then you might wake up and say to your wife, "Oh, we may want to move to Ridgecrest <laughs> or not." <laughs> well, but actually, we, one of our one of our dear friends was Kathy Purcell, was a judge out here oh, really? forever. Yes, we I loved Kathy. Her. Uh -huh. I used to work Good with lady. her at the DA's office right across the hall. Mm -hmm. um, she used to be a nurse, so she was so helpful in our cases. Well, I imagine because we'd get a, yeah. you know a medical report about injuries, and Kathy, what does this mean? Yeah, what is and, that serious or not? Right. No, Kathy always loved it out here. You know, she was oh. always talking about how wonderful East Kern is. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. well, we, we'd love to have you, but you're really not in that position right now. You're, no, no, it wouldn't be till January. Yeah, um, the elections in June seventh, and it, so and that we do election have, is be the day of the primaries, but that's exactly. the final election. Well. It is for me because there's only two of us. Okay, so whichever so one wins will be it. Th we're, that's okay. it. Okay. Now, it, with the with the Judge Woodward election, there are three people. So if one of the three gets fifty one percent, basically fifty percent of the vote plus one vote, okay, then that one's done. Oh. But generally, the more people you have in a race, it's going to break it down a little more. Well, then it, yeah. it, right, then it, then you won't. You'll get down to just the two, and then they'll have the they'll go to the at the, the main election in right. November. Right. right. So, like okay. in Bakersfield, we have twenty five people running for mayor. Oh. The odds of any one of those folks getting fifty one percent. No. Gonna no, it's not going to happen. It is so it's going to get down to two, and then they'll have the next around. Okay. Next, the next okay. Election. So you're having to go all over Kern County, though. Yes, but we're loving going all over Kern County. Oh, but I mean, you know, it, it, it we're really loving is. having you here. We have the neatest town, and everybody that comes here really likes us. Yeah. So we've I spent think a lot that's of time good. in Ridgecrest. Ridgecrest is um, a neat town. We've got is. a lot of really great people over Before here. Before we went on the air, we were talking about the uh, Officer of the Year awards. Mm -hmm. we, we've come up for that several times. That's great. My yeah. daughters and my family and I like to go to Red Rock Canyon and do some four wheel Perfect. driving. Yeah. Um, I know if we're talking about just East Kern, we've we've been to the Mojave Fly Ins. Hmm. We've been to your Thousand uh, Flags Parade. We uh, love that. Uh huh. Oh, that's, uh, and we that's volunteered nice this year and helped put the flags up after the parade oh, in good. the park. That was wonderful. All right. Um, well, that's great because we have like been to have people that here. know a little bit. You oh, have yeah. been. Yeah, I have been assigned out here. Okay. Um, and my most important connection out here is. Over the last 25 years, I have prosecuted criminals that have tried to rip um, citizens off from Ridgecrest, that have filed false workers' comp claims, that have stolen from uh, victims here and in Rosamond and mm. in Cal City. Um, I've come to Ridgecrest in the last couple of years recently to do anti-fraud presentations, mm -hmm. um, talking about identity theft and some of the contractor fraud, which was the case we were going to talk about from this morning. Right. We got a, a really good conviction. And that's probably important because spring is here. Well, we're you know we're down to about the last six or seven minutes, so oh maybe my you goodness. want to do that. Okay, yeah, Let's maybe I the, should. The well, high points that okay, you really want to get minutes. out. Okay, six minutes. So I think one of the things I really would be uh, negligent in not talking about are my endorsements. Right. So um, just a quick minute. Quick, what about quick your family? Minute. Oh, my family's absolutely wonderful. Okay, you uh, have my wife's from uh, Bakersfield. Oh, okay. And I have two daughters that were born here. Okay. Uh, one is now in college, and one is going to be going to college. Okay. And we've had three generations of our family in the Kern County area. Wonderful. We do love Ridgecrest. We come up here all the time, and I'm endorsed by your uh, chief, Ron Strand. Okay. Uh, the Ridgecrest police officers, um, Supervisor Mick Gleason, Supervisor Mike Maggard, Sheriff Donnie Youngblood. Former right. Sheriff uh, Carl Sparks and former Sheriff Mac Wimbish, Commissioner nice. Pat Glennon, Judge Pritchard, uh, your East Corn judges, District Attorney Lisa Green, the former District Attorney, and the Chief of Police in Bakersfield, McFarland, Taft, Delano, uh, law enforcement countywide endorses me, and that's Wonderful. because for 25 years I have not been involved in politics. I've been putting bad guys away, and I would. I, it's been a privilege to work for you for 25 years fighting for justice, and I would be honored to be your next Kern County Superior Court Judge. That'd be great. That'd be Thank really you. good. Thank you. And then uh, your preparation for being district attorney, you had to go to law school Correct. and all that. Right, and absolutely. Then, and then you were appointed as a right. deputy. Hired, hired as a deputy DA. Okay. And um, I'm an award winning prosecutor. Mothers Against Drunk Driving gave me oh. Prosecutor of the Year Award for standing up for victims' rights, and that was the boating case where we had a drunk boater who was also high on marijuana mm. and crashed into the boat and killed the driver. Uh -huh. The kids on the, the, the surviving kids that were on the boat um, didn't know how to drive the boat and he threatened to have the, he threatened to kill them if they called the police. What a guy. Um, so we, we was originally filed as manslaughter mm -hmm. and had to go to District Attorney Lisa Green and convince her that this was actually a second degree murder case. And we did convict him of second degree murder. Good. And today we convicted a guy who's been ripping off 
uh, people in Kern County since 2009 really? as an unlicensed, uninsured contractor. He would go around oh. and take money from people, start projects, rip them off. And he had multiple cases where prior DAs had fired, filed them as misdemeanors. Hmm. And a new case came to me, again asking for another misdemeanor. And I said, he's got six prior misdemeanors. Let's and top this and let's, see what, yeah. Let's stop this. And they're all smaller amounts, but if I put all the cases together, mm -hmm. we can file one big felony. And the problem was with misdemeanors, he would get cited and released, and then he would flee, and he'd get a warrant, and he'd get picked up again. In the meantime, he's picked up another victim. Oh. So we arrested him, we made him stay in jail. We got a $500,000 warrant with an order that he had to prove that the money he was using was non-fraudulent. Well, when you've been ripping people you off, that? you yeah. can't. When you've been uh -uh. stealing from people for since 2009, yeah. every dollar you own is that is, comes from So that. he has yeah. stayed in custody, and we convicted him today, which is great, because as you know, All it's right. Friday the 13th. Oh, the so it was his unlucky it? Yeah. day. It's his first felony ever. We're going to call it lucky day. Yes, yeah. lucky for us. <laughs> yeah. We had uh, one of the investigators from uh, the Contractor State License Board came down. Mm -hmm. She said she's been doing this type of investigation since 2007. It's the first felony case she's aware of in the state of California. I know that's not true because I filed one last year. Okay. Same type of guy ripping people off. Did you get And we got him as a felony as well, got Wonderful. him in custody. Um, you've gotta be careful out there. Um, it's very easy to check to see if someone's a licensed contractor. You can go to the CSLB, that's the Contractor State License Board website. Okay. Or you can go to the Better Business Bureau's website, and they will mm -hmm. tell you that they're not licensed and they've got complaints. But speaking of websites, I should mention you should go to VoteDavidWolf.com. I was going to ask if you had your own website. <laughs> I do. VoteDavidWolf.com. Okay. www.VoteDavidWolf.com. And you can see the rest of my endorsements. And law enforcement countywide, judges, prosecutors, business owners. Um, David Olds, the the owner of Second, I'm sorry, of uh, Five Dogs Gun Range in Bakersfield, oh, okay. and Second Amendment Sports have our our signs out in front of them, and uh, we would be honored to have your vote, and I'd be honored to be your next Kern County Superior Court Judge, and if they put me out here, we're going to spend a lot more time in Red Rock Canyon, yeah. and, and uh, exploring the area because we we've, we've it, loved it out so here. It's so great out here, and and so you're you don't have a preference, or do you have a preference where you'd like to serve? Probably I, right. at Bakersfield because you live there. But uh, well, Bakersfield would be easier on the commute, uh -huh. um, yeah. Obviously, and if if it was a chance to fight crime and fight for justice and protect victims' rights, because we all talk about defendants have rights, but the California Constitution includes the fact that victims have rights, and that's why I've like gotten that. so many awards from victims groups and so many victims groups and victims advocates are backing me. Um, if that meant coming out to Ridgecrest, we would come out to Ridgecrest. Wonderful. That is so good. So we'd like to say thank you for coming. Oh, but thank you. People out here, you need to know, go look at um, David's website. Take a look at his people that are supporting him. He gave you a list of a lot of them, and they've all either been here or stayed here for some time. Yes. And so you're on top of the list for a lot of folks. So I hope so. Think about that, people, when you cast your vote on the 7th. And um, is there anything else you'd like to say in about 10 seconds? No, I just wanted to say thank you for letting me work for you, fighting for justice for the last 25 years. It's been the best job, and I really would be honored to be your next Kern County Superior Court judge. Thank you. Thank you very much.